welcome back if you've been here before. If this is the first time you've been here, thank you very much. I appreciate your patronage. I'll try to make it worth your while. I'm the host around here. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot, and today is Wednesday the 7th. Now, before we get started, let me remind you of my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host, Taylor, we go on live for about an hour and a half, and we're taking requests from viewers like you. We're looking at stocks that you want to share with everybody. Drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the information, generally speaking. Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinions, whatever that's worth. Now, we've only got so much time, can only look at so many tickers, and I do go by first come, first served. Well, I announced this video earlier in the day, around lunchtime, and people start dropping their tickers then, and I do take them. So by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I virtually have all the tickers I can handle, but we are reserving two spots for two tickers during the show. We're going to let Taylor pick those. We've been looking at charts that are the hottest. Doesn't absolutely mean they've been running the hardest. They could be in a perfect setup, but those are the stocks we're going to look at from the show. So you want to get your stocks looked at guaranteed, get them in early. As soon as you see that announcement come out of the video, drop them right then and there. Guaranteed to be in the show. Guaranteed I'll have enough time to go through the information for you. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays, every Thursday. Now, what I do on this show is to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock, at least in my opinion. I trade penny stocks every day from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. There's no lack of penny stocks, but I'm looking for a hot penny stock, a penny stock that has potential to make us money. And I've got an interesting one to share with you. This is Letter Tech Holdings, ticker LDTC. Now, normally when I find a hot penny stock, it's because I'm looking at the charts. And that is kind of how I found this stock. I was looking at the charts, but it wasn't this stock I saw. It was her warrant. These companies on the major exchanges, a lot of them have warrants. This company has a warrant. A warrant is another way that the company can make money now and down the road. They are stocks. You can just trade these like stocks, get in, get out whenever you want, make your money. But what they basically are is coupons. The company is selling coupons so that you can buy shares of stock at a guaranteed set low price up to five years down the road. So the stock may be 80 cents right now. The warrant says you can buy a share at a buck anytime in the next five years. Well, right now, that's not a great deal, 80 cents. But in three years from now, it could be at 22 bucks. One warrant, one buck, you've got yourself a $22 share. You got $21 worth of profit. How many warrants do you have? You can make a lot of money with warrants. Just ask Warren Buffett. He makes a ton off of them. And this is what caught my attention to the company was its chart. Now it's pulled back a little bit right now. She was at uh, about 89% gains today. Now I'll tell you why that's significant. Warrants are always penny stocks normally. They're about one eighth to one tenth the price of the stock. The stock right now is at 61 cents. This was up, oh, it just dropped again, whoa. All right, now here's the thing about warrants. Warrants don't get a lot of volume. They all get a couple 10,000, a couple 100,000. Rarely do you see a million shares of warrants moving, but they move fast, they move hard. When the stock itself for the company goes up 10%, the warrant can go up 50, 100, 300% in the same amount of time. It just grows harder and faster. So I really like to play warrants because they are cheaper and do move quick. But because there's not a lot of liquidity, there's not a lot of shares being sold back to back to back. There's dead times between buys a lot of times. You end up with big gaps between the ask and the bid. So it could be at two cents for the bid and the ask will be all the way up at 10 cents and it'll jump. Somebody will buy it for 10 cents. Boom. It goes from two cents to 10 cents. That's a 500% jump, but don't try to sell. Look at your ask and your bid. Chances are the bid didn't move. Even though the price is 10 cents, the ask is 10 cents. The bid still sends two cents. It'll take another bid or two to get the price to move off of the bid and come up. 
But when it starts happening, when bidders start coming in, it starts jumping quick and the bid moves with it. You can make some good money on it. Well, this is normally a precursor to a stock starting to move. When the warrant starts getting attention prior to the stock moving, we can normally start watching the stock. And I was looking. The chart is just setting up for the LDTC stock, the common stock. It's in a perfect place if you really want to catch it early. She could be breaking out right now. And she's got a lot of potential. She's got a lot of news with her new technology. So we're going to get into what this company does. LDTC finished the day just under 62 cents and she was up just a little over 6% today. Now this is a major exchange penny stock. She's on the NASDAQ. So there's no transaction fees when you trade it. You can trade it pre-market after market. You can trade the warrant pre-market after market as well. Plus there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. Isn't it more fun to be trading where people have money and are buying and selling? The OTC is very stifled right now. We're running at bare minimum volumes of like two to three billion. When back before COVID, we were doing 60 to 70 billion shares a day. And now we're doing like two to five billion. We've been like that for two years. And the last thing not to be overlooked, there's a lot more rules that these companies have to abide by up on the major exchange which just overall makes it safer for our investments. So let's talk about LDTC. Let's dive on into the most recent news press to get this information. Now, LetterTech is basically working with autonomous driving. They're working with AI software and LiDAR. The company is a global software company founded in 2007 and headquartered in Quebec City with additional research and development centers in Montreal, Canada, and Tel Aviv, Israel. LetterTech develops and provides comprehensive AI-based low-level sensor fusion and perception software solutions that enable the deployment of autonomous driving and parking. LetterTech software applies advanced AI and computer vision algorithms to generate accurate 3D models of the environment to achieve better decision-making and safer navigation. This high-performance Scalable to whatever size you need, cost-effective technology is available to all the large car manufacturers, all the OEMs, the Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers, to efficiently implement automotive and off-road vehicle autonomous driving. LetterTech is responsible for several remote sensing innovations, with over 160 patent applications, of which 87 have been granted, that enhance autonomous driving and parking capabilities. Better awareness around the vehicle is critical in making global mobility safer, more efficient, sustainable, and affordable. This is what drives LetterTech to seek to become the most widely adopted sensor fusion and perception software solution. They've got a lot of different products. When you use them all together on a vehicle, you've got 360 view up and down, so you have no blind spots. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not real comfortable giving over control of my car to somebody I can't see. <laughs> I'm just not there yet, but I got to be honest, I can see situations where I would want it. I've been behind vehicles, trucks, during a snowstorm or on a dirt road that are putting up so much cloud that I can't see where I'm at. I've been in Florida. Oh my God, when the rain comes down in Florida, it literally comes down in sheets. So hard, so fast, that you can't see any of the cars around you. And we're all still moving. It's quite scary. So yeah, I would definitely be diving on to some sort of autonomous driving that doesn't require visual to see. You can turn off your lights at night and this thing is still going to work. Which, <laughs> that may come in handy at some point. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> they tell us here that they've got a website real easy to find. It's the name of the company, lettertech.com. Now, we're not going to dive into it, but I'll tell you what. It's an excellent website, just loaded, packed with information. Lots of videos. Talk about all their different products in detail. So if you really want to know about this company, just head on over to their website. It is packed, folks. All right, so let's get some information now about the stock. What was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she's up. We are looking at the common stock. 
She was doing about 16,000 shares a day over the last 30 days, definitely under the radar, especially on the major exchange. Today, she's still under the radar, but she is jumping up. What, what is that? About four times her normal volume. We're up to 73,000. Share structure for the company. Well, that's good news. Outstanding share count isn't even 29 million. We could actually call that a low float. Now, not knowing what the float is, it could be up to 29 million or it could be considerably less. Whatever it is, it is a very decent float. Market cap for the company, we're just under 17 million. Financials for LDTC. All right, over the last three years, 21 to 23, she's actually been dropping in revenues, dropped a little less than a million over the last three years. But what's really concerning is her profit margin. Where did that go? We lost all of that and we're actually losing money right now. We're down 55,000 where last year we were up two and a half million. Now, when we jump over to the quarterlies, we don't get anything here, but they did just come out with their quarterly report on May 15th. Now we've got some information up here at the top I'm gonna to jump back into, but sticking with our numbers. Their fiscal year ends in September. So their first quarter ends in December. Their second quarter ends in March. So this is their second quarter for 2024, ending March 31st. They tell us their revenue was 1.9 million compared to half a million a year ago. So that's up almost four times, 400% compared to last year. Gross profit for the fiscal second quarter of 2024, ending March 31st, was 0.2 million compared to a loss of 0.8 million. That's a huge jump coming from 0.8 million all the way up to 0.2 million. So they are growing in revenues right now. Now that's not the catalyst, but we do have a financial coming out August 13th, August 14th. Let me make sure about the date. That is the 14th. We do have a financial coming out and I'm expecting these to be bigger and better, but that isn't the catalyst. It isn't going to hurt by any means, but I am looking at the news that we're going to be looking at here. Jumping into the disclosures now. Ah, yes. What a pain in the butt this was. Look at all these 424B3s, but look at the dates they were filed. The 29th, the 29th, the 29th, a bunch of them. Then a bunch on the 6th. They repeated it. It's the exact same filing, at least as far as I can tell, because there is a lot of information in this, and I didn't read it verbatim. So there may be slight differences I'm not aware of. Up at the top, they talk about an offering for warrants and common stock. In the middle, they start discussing their management, and down at the bottom, they focus in on their credit and their credit facilities. Me, I was only here looking at the offering. I wanted to see how many more shares they were going to throw onto the market. Well, the first thing I noticed is that there is no timetable here. It doesn't look like this has gone live. I didn't see an effect filing, which is like the gun shooting and it happens. So I think they're just talking about it now, but we're getting an idea of what they're thinking about. They're talking about putting 10.8 million more shares on the market. Our outstanding share count currently is 29 million. So this would be just a little over one third of that. You're looking at 33% dilution. They're talking about a secondary offering of 20 million shares. Now that is going to be half of the 40, which is going to be a 50% dilution. That's a lot of dilution. And I don't know when and if this is going to happen. Then we have one more huge dilution up here. 24 million warrants are going to be sold. Now, this isn't going to dilute us now. When warrants are used, that is three, four, five years down the road, when they're exercised, they give birth to a new share of stock, like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. So we've got 24 million warrants, which could, if exercised, a lot of times, a lot of warrants don't get exercised, would turn into 24 million more shares, three, four, five years down the road, that would be added on to this. Just food for thought. So we get to see they are thinking about putting shares out. It could happen here soon, but I don't have any clue about that. Outside of that, we don't have any other filings to consider. So let's dive on into that news. 
we have got news going back here to the 15th, which was their financial results. Oh, right. I didn't cover the information up at the top. So up here at the top, they give us some more tidbits of information. The company is pleased today to announce the financial results for the fiscal second quarter 2024 ending March 31st. I'm pleased to report our meaningful progress with several automotive original equipment manufacturers and tier one customers reaching several significant milestones including responding to requests for information and quotes. So we're looking at them stirring up business right now which is what you're going to see happening in the news. Now, the company is not working by themselves. They've got other companies working alongside them, helping them. They are working in partnership with industry giants like ARM, which is on the NASDAQ, ticker ARM. They are working with Black Sesame. They are also working with Texas Instruments, also on the NASDAQ, TXN. Now, they tell us that they have responded already to a price quote. One of these car manufacturers wanted a quote, and the quote was for $650 million. This is all it's going to take, folks, is one contract. And right now, the company is jumping around doing these conferences. They did one in June, the Maximum Group Virtual TMT Conference. They also did the Douche Bank Global Auto Industry Conference. And right now, they are over doing the European conference, which we can get some information about that here. The introduction of our European letter navigator is a tremendous step forward for the letter tech in the European market, as it enables us to truly demonstrate the performance of our software in real time to the automotive market, as we have done in North America. They tell us this newly released letter navigator is an addition to the company's fleet of demonstration vehicles already out there, formerly known as letter car. These are in North America, Israel, and China. So they are showing, demonstrating what they've got in countries like China where they make a lot of cars, in Europe where they make a lot of cars, in the United States, and they're doing that right now. This is going on until, we had a date up here, October 10th. October 10th is when it ends. They are showing car manufacturers. It's not about getting new investors. They are showing off their technologies to all of these car manufacturers who sooner or later are going to be implementing this into their vehicles one way or another. The last piece of news. This came out yesterday. The company enters into amendments to a credit facility and announces receipt of NASDAQ deficiency notice. Now, there's a lot of details on this news press. By all means, dive into it if you want them. In a nutshell, the amendment to the credit facility. One of the requirements for them to have credit was to be holding so much cash in reserves. They went below that. Well, they were granted a release so they can hold less cash now. No problem. They've also been given a grace period. They've been given a postponement on one of their payments. It doesn't sound great to hear, but the creditors are working with them. That's what we need. Then we have a receipt from the NASDAQ for deficiency. We are under a buck. They've been contacted about this. You've been under a dollar for too long. They have also been contacted that their market value is too low. Now, they say they have up until, what is it, February 3rd to get these problems taken care of. So we've got a full six months from where we are right now to get this price up over a dollar. We, the investors, we got to bid that up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. If we do that, the company's out of hot water. They fall back underneath the dollar, the process starts all over again. But if we do not bid this stock up over a dollar by February 3rd, they have one of two choices, either do a reverse stock split or get kicked down to the OTC. So come on, folks, let's bid this price up. So basically what I'm saying is we've got catalysts here because they're stirring up business. They're out there stirring the pot. They're in America. They're in China. They're in Europe. They're talking to all these car companies, and now they're starting to put off quotes. And all it takes is one contract, folks, one car company to say, yeah, we're going to put this in this model car this year. Boom, there's a multi-million dollar contract, and this company can use it. Their financials can use it. Right now, we are at $5 million, and they just said $650 million was that last quote. 
That's exciting. All right, let's go take a look at the chart for LDTC and her warrant, which is really what caught my attention. So let's get the rest of the story for Letter Tech over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We're going to chart LDTC, the common stock. We're also going to chart the warrant LDTCW. Looking at the common stock first, got it opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. Now, what happened here is, is that Letter Tech did a reverse merger with a SPAC. All of this flat area here is before Letter Tech got on the market. This is all the SPAC. A SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. It is a group of investors that come onto the major exchange and secure a ticker. That's it for investment purposes. They have no business. They have no revenues. So they go out looking to make a deal. A private company or a company that wants to uplist and get onto the major exchange. Well, in preparation of that, not having any clue who they're going to merge with, they start selling shares in advance at $10 a piece. And the shares are only worth $10 until they close the deal, which is why you see it flat here. Now, we can bid the price up. We can bid it down. But the company's only got 18 to 24 months to consummate a deal and close it. If the SPAC fails to do that, they have to give back your money. You didn't know that, did you? It is the only money back guarantee I have found on the market. Well, the company started to climb a little bit here and we hit a high of $11.20. Letter Tech came onto the market on December 7th. And like a lot of companies here recently, as soon as she came onto the market, she fell. I cannot explain it. She fell from $11.20 all the way down here to like $2.60. We had a bounce off of that, came down a little bit, went sideways and took another drop and then another drop. And we hit an all-time low just a little while ago of $0.57. Cents. Let's come on down to our four-hour, six-month view. So there's our high. You can see we had a big poke all the way up to the 200, but you're not going to see any breakouts with the 200 this steep. Not getting close to it at all. We still aren't close to it. Now, before we go anywhere, let's get some SNRs here, supports and resistances. I can see we've got one right there. We've definitely got one up in this region. I'm just ballparking these folks. <laughs> we've got one definitely in this area here. Yeah, there's one there. And then you're going to have to put on your Fibonacci to grab those. So we've got a bunch of them here at 346, 260, 211, and a dollar 37. And as you can see, she isn't in a breakout mode right now, but she's getting in that position. She was falling here, stopped falling. That's your first change of trend. Stop falling. Start going sideways if you have to. Well, that's what she did for quite a while here. She has been going sideways and drooping just a little bit more, hitting that all-time low of just over 57 cents. Now, we've got a lot of volume that has been coming into the picture. If you look here, we've had big bolts of volume getting stronger and stronger as time is going on. Our 200-day SMA is getting closer and closer. Our price is still underneath all of the SMAs except our 200 haul. Now, most of you don't have the 200 haul on your chart. The 200 haul, H-U-L-L, is a lot like your 200-day moving average. Both take 200 days of prices and average them together, but the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. This means it can relate to the price better than the MA can. This is a stranger to the price. This is a buddy. And would you believe that the 200 haul has as much authority and as much strength and power as your 200 day MA, but the price likes it better. So what I see here is what I'm looking for. My price between the two 200s, underneath the 200 MA and on top of the 200 haul. When the 200 haul goes level and flat, on mine it turns blue and starts to climb, you will normally see a dip down to the 200 and then a catapult push off. It'll just jump right off of that 200 and it will shoot straight to the 200 and in most cases through it. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying she's getting into that sort of position and the volume is starting to come in now. Oscillators. 
Heat is building up right now. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is underneath that pink line. We want it on top. We want it climbing. It is just starting to climb now. Our MACD, it is just starting to climb. It's underneath this signal line here. We do need to get on top of that, but you can see positive pressure. We got green bars coming into the picture. And our RSI is very cold right now. It's down at 44, and I don't like to see it any less than 55. We are early to the party. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So we've got a downtrend here from 94 cents down to 57 cents, pretty much underneath all of our SMAs. Our 200 haul was rolling over right here, and now she is starting to go flat just in this region as our 200 is going flat. I am watching for this now, folks. I am watching for our price to come up, our 200 haul to start pushing up, go blue on my chart, and then push right to that 200. Our oscillators say, again, strength is building up. There's nothing really powerful here, but it is heating up a little bit. We got tiny bubbles on the bottom of our water in the pot. Going down to our 15-minute five-day, it pretty much looks the same across the board. A gentle decline, floating down to that low bubble, coming up off of it, getting on top of our 200. Notice she was underneath everything here. Now she's getting on top of the 200, which is the first place she's got to go. Yes, we are early here, folks. She is starting to set up. The warrant moving tells me to look. The news, them going to all these conferences, showing off their technology to all of these major car manufacturers, and it only takes one contract to blow the financials of this company right out of the water. Imagine if they got multiple contracts. All right, let's go take a look at the warrant now. It is the same ticker with just a W added to the end. Most warrants are like that, but not all of them. All right, let's kick this back to four hours. Wow, we definitely had a run back here. Oh, this is when she came on the market. The stock was falling and the warrant was running. It happens. She jumped here from about one and one third cent up to 30 cents. Holy cow, folks. Let me see, a uh, thousand, three thousand. I think that's 3,000% gains. Yeah, 3,000% gains, folks. A $100 bill put in down here would have made you $3,000 up there. But she came all the way back down. She started underneath the 200, came down and landed on the 200. Bounced off of that, rode her 50-day SMA up and over until she fell underneath the 200. And right now, she is starting to come back around. Here comes our 200 haul going flat. The price came down towards it. It's cutting up right now, getting a lot of volume, a lot of strength, and it is pushing. From yesterday's price, she was at about two cents. Today, she jumped up to six cents. I didn't know it got that high. That is a 300% bounce from yesterday's close to where she ripped today. Looks like she hit that at about uh, nine in the morning. That may be pre-market, folks. Then she pulled back, and she's sitting right on top of her 50-day SMA right now. Osculators are showing they are strong, but we have had a pullback. So says our RSI. Take a look at that one hour view. Same thing. She was floating on top of the 200 haul here, took a crouch like a cat. She just crouched down a couple inches so she could jump a couple feet. Went way up there, hitting that high, pulling back, coming underneath the 200 and landing on our nine day SMA. All of our other SMAs are starting to turn up. My 200 haul has just gone blue. Osculators had a lot of strength on this chart, but they are cooling off at those two red bars. And a quick look at our five minutes. We got a dip down to that low of two cents and then a rip to that six cents, 300%. Coming back down to that nine day and rolling off of it and dropping pretty close down to the 50. Now it's tough to read charts with your warrants because warrants don't have liquidity. The volume goes off and on, off and on. What you've really got to watch is the level two, if you have them. It'll tell you how many people are in line to buy and how many people are in line to sell and what they're asking. And if you see a bunch of numbers and a bunch of ones, the price can start to move very, very quickly. I like to watch warrants because when the stock starts to move, the warrant moves faster and harder. 
If this stock goes up 10%, you could easily see the warrant do 50, 100, 1,000%. Absolutely, not a doubt about it. So the company, when it came onto the market, was worth $10 a share. This SPAC did a deal with the company, doing all their due diligence, found it was worth it, and here we are bringing the price all the way down to under a buck. It is a buy right now. The company has technology. The company has products, and now they are showing it off to the biggest car manufacturers in multiple countries around the world. And all it takes is one contract. That last one they quoted at $650 million. And this company's never been over $7 million in a year. Imagine what one contract would do. And right now they are putting those quotes out, folks. We have their financials coming out on the 14th. The warrant is warming up. The stock is getting in position. You may want to do some more research. Don't dive in because of my due diligence. Do your own behind me. See if you get excited. See if you see something that interests you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.